Hey everyone, happy Star Trek day. Today we're watching, you guessed it, some more Star Trek. Today we're watching episode 22 of season 2 of the original series, and the episode is called By Any Other Name. I am not sure I have a guess on what this might be about. I don't think I can with the that title, but but I do think it's safe to assume that we're going to go on an adventure. And with the crew of the Enterprise to guide us on this journey, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. And I'm excited to watch another episode of Star Trek for the very first time in my life. It's always like a momentous occasion. Like, this is the first time I'm watching this episode. Ah, okay. Hope you guys enjoy. Ooh, look at this set. <gasps> Beautiful map painting. Well, somebody sent a distress call. No sign of the spaceship, no sign of debris. Two human forms at bearing 300 Mark 7. Too cute. Rescue distress call, huh? Somebody say something? Whoa, look at her makeup. It's very kind of you to respond so quickly, Captain. They don't look very distressed. We'll surrender your ship to me. Oh. He's like, excuse you? You have a very strange sense of humor, Mr. Harris. What? I am Rojan Kelber. I am your commander from this moment on. <laughs> and you leave this galaxy forever. You humans must face the end of your existence as you have known it. Wow. So the distress call was a trap. He's not a human. He has some crazy powers. And he wants our ship. And to leave the galaxy? Maybe we should go. We've never been out of the galaxy. It might be fun. Go where no man has gone before. Voyage where? Your neighboring galaxy, which you call Andromeda. High radiation levels in our galaxy will make life there impossible. The search for one which our race could conquer and occupy. I'm well, sorry, this galaxy is already occupied. <laughs> yeah, we don't... We're full capacity, sorry. And your ship impregnable. The capture has already begun. Something penetrating from the planet. Impregnable and penetration, okay. Whoa! How many of them are there? Kelvin Empire? I'm gonna call him Kevin's. Don't those girls ever get cold? Rojan, Kana here. The ship is ours. We control the bridge, engineering, and life support systems. She's gorge. Even at maximum warp, the Enterprise couldn't get to the Andromeda galaxy for thousands of years. We will modify its engines. The journey between galaxies will take less than. 300 of your years. Well, that's still too long. Our ships were of multi-generation design. We were born in the intergalactic void. And our mission will be completed by a commander who is my descendant. What? That's crazy. We can control a federation as easily as we can control you. I don't like these Kevins. Anybody who's watching whose name is Kevin, though, you're great. Unless you're from Andromeda, then I have a problem with you. I love the purple sky. Space again, Hannah. The orange bushes. I do not think we could have kept our sanity living too long on this accursed planet. It is an undisciplined environment. It's beautiful. You control it. You got a pond. These shells in which we have encased ourselves. They have such heightened senses. Since the ship was designed to sustain these forms, we have little choice. At least we'll be away from all of this openness. We will be safe in the comforting closeness of walls. Captain, what do they want from us? What kind of people are they? That's a very good question. Well, they're not nice. They're conquerors. They have a superiority complex. However perfect they are, there don't seem to be very many of them. Why don't we They have them? the paralysis field. Yes. If we could put that out of operation, I would have to have one to examine. Oh, you'll have one, sir. If I have to rip one of the Kelvins apart to get it. Jay, you'll get your chance, but you'll do it under orders. 
<laughs> He's like, let me at him. <laughs> On the Mini R7, you were able to trick the guard. As I recall, Captain, I led him to believe we had escaped. Oh, uh, yes. I feel like I remember this. I think it's working. Oh, maybe not. Oh, it did. Oh, my. I just had the strangest thought of a uh, train of thoughts right now. <laughs> Kevinator, the thing. I was going to call it a Kevinator. And then it reminded me of a Baconator. And then I was reminded of Kevin Bacon. I've had a long day. Belinda, the female. I don't understand why they want planets to conquer if they don't even like being on planets out in the open. Just stay in your spaceships. There's plenty of space. But those two are unnecessary. Wait, wait. We feel pain when others suffer for our mistakes. You're telling your me you feel pain? To watch them die. What? Oh my god. They turned into D20s. Can you change them back? This is the essence of what they were. Distilled down into these compact shapes. Once crushed. Stop! Oh my god, what is it? This is the most infuriating episode, like... This person is dead. However... This is torture. That one can be restored. It's the girl. Oh no. I'm I'm right, waiting for like Kirk to just like beat him up. Start drop kicking and stuff. But he can't. All he can do is watch. Can't forget the picture of Yeoman Thompson crushed to a handful of dust. Series of bizarre and exotic images. Immense beings. A hundred limbs which resemble tentacles. That's their true form? Well, if they look that way normally, why did they adapt themselves to our bodies? Immense beings with a hundred tentacles would have difficulty with a turbo lift. <laughs> yeah. Spock, if you reverse the circuits on McCoy's neuroanalyzer, can you set up a counter field to jam the paralysis projector? Jam the jammer? You and Bones have to get up to the ship. How? Mr. Spock. You're sick. I assure you, Captain, I'm in perfect health. It's a good idea, Jim, but anyone looking at him can tell he's healthy. Vulcans have the ability to place themselves in a kind of trance. Why would the Kevins care if he's sick? It will take me a moment to prepare. That was a quick moment. His pulse is practically non-existent. Mr. Spock is ill. The doctor thinks he may be dying. Get him up to sick bay. There's a chance he'll live. I don't. Do the Kevins need Spock? I will have you beamed aboard. Doctor, what happened? Prepare two cc's of stokaline. Stokaline, but doctor, that. Please, nurse, just follow orders, will you? <laughs> what is stokaline? It's a flare-up of Regillian cassava fever. He'll be all right in a couple of hours. Very well. I will inform Rotan. Did she catch on? What do you want from me now? We will beam aboard the vessel shortly. I wish you to understand your duties. I guess they need the crew to fly the ship, Spock included. We Kelvins have a code of honor. Harsh, demanding. You have honor? We have a very different idea of honor, us humans and you Kevins. Captain Kirk, what is it you call them? Flowers. The memory tapes tell us of such things on Kelvin. Crystals that form with such rapidity, we call them Sashir. A rose by any other name. By any other name? Shakespeare. That which we call a rose by any other name, it smells sweet. Oh, I've got to do some research after. I love doing research, though. 
Increase speed to warp 11. Warp 11. Look at them go. Located the power source, Captain. It's installed in engineering. I tidied in all the lab computers. That'll give it a bit more power to push with. Okay, Scotty and Spock, you know this is gonna work. Stay on the case. This is it. This material surrounding the projector cannot penetrate the casing to get to the machine. <sighs> That's it, then. There is one other possibility, Mr. Scott. The final decision, of course, must be the captain's. The barrier we must traverse is negative energy. I see what you're getting at. I can't say I like it. Nor I. I don't get it. I don't know what their plan is. What alternative? When we engage the barrier, the ship will explode. Ah, oh, I had a feeling that's what they were... Are you mad? So they can't conquer. I can't just... They can't get word back. Take your places, gentlemen. We're approaching the barrier. Oh my god. Now he has to decide. Right now. Commercial break. <laughs> Thank God I don't have to wait for commercials. We are in contact with the barrier. Sir! Hold your position. I didn't think negative energy was going to be so energetic. <laughs> we're out of the galaxy. And we're heading to Andromeda? Instruments returning to normal, Captain. But 300 years? You know, start the neutralizing operation. What neutralizing operation? You humans are troublesome for us. We are therefore neutralizing all non-essential personnel. No. Oh. Dude! These people suck. We have no need for communication. No, 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 no. <laughs> she got cubed. No, 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 no. Oh my god, this is crazy. <laughs> Check off. Every, you know, every once in a while they put out an episode where it's just like, this is this is the worst situation that they've ever been in. And this feels like the worst situation they've ever been in. Oh my god. Well, at least they didn't squash him. Do you not agree that this is a better thing for them than exploding the ship as your engineer had thought to do? How did you know about that? Tomar has devised a mechanism any further tampering we lost our chance i don't know how kirk is staying so like calm like i know he's in a lot of inner turmoil right now but i would be screaming slapping punching kicking yelling just crying jim i saw them reduce four of my doctors and nurses into those little they the whole crew oh okay now it comes out now the anger comes out I do not understand why you take the trouble to consume this bulk material. Before you condemn it, why don't you try it? I believe I will. Assist me. You want us to... Good idea, Doctor. Go ahead. <laughs> and I'll show you how to work the select buttons. I thought we were going to spoon feed him. I know the casing looks impenetrable, but I may be able to do some. We need that projector to bring our people back to human form. Ugh. Then how will we stop the Kelvins? I don't know. If I could. I'm delighted. I'm delighted. Good for you, buddy. <laughs> no one cares. The Kelvins have superior intellectual capacity. They've apparently sacrificed anything which would tend to distract them. Taste, touch, Oh, smell, that's why. And, of course, emotions. But then Tomar shouldn't be enjoying the taste of his food. I mean, but the human bodies. Human form. Mm-hmm. So maybe... Maybe compassion could be a thing. If he keeps reacting like that, he's gonna need a diet. <laughs> if we can confuse them enough, we can get those devices from their belts. Is this gonna be another eye mud situation? <laughs> I can take a one way right off. Slap him, punch him. You're going to need something to wash that down with. Alcohol. Well, that bite of yours is a bit anemic. What are you doing? I'm gonna give you a shot.
So they're just... They're just gonna get them all drunk. Wow. What is it you wish? I wish to apologize. His job is to turn her on. I don't usually go around beating up beautiful women. Why not? Well, there are better things for men and women to do. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Is there some significance to this action? <laughs> it's like, what? That usually works. <laughs> Meant to express warmth and love. Oh, you are trying to seduce me. Do you really regard this touching of the lips as pleasurable? I did. Let me try. What did he want here? He came to apologize for hitting me. In what manner? <laughs> She's like, I'm just going to kiss everybody. Oh, no. Scotty, too? But you're... I hope he's pretending. Oh, gosh. Your game is off. Are you disturbed by the incident? The symptoms you are displaying usually indicate jealousy. Kalinda's a female, nothing more. You are not jealous. No. No. Or upset. Certainly not. <laughs> yeah, looking a little bit agitated there, Mr. Kevin. Oh, my goodness. What is it? It's green. It's green. I do not wish you to fraternize Her hair is with down. any of the humans. Why not? They're not meant for us, not for Kelvins. And I wish you to particularly avoid Captain Kirk. I will not. You will do as I say. How many more of these? I think you better stay on them for a few days, and then we'll see how you're responding. I see no reason for you to refer to yourself in the plural. What is Bones doing here? Are you just trying to get him to eat solid food, or is there something in that shot? Very, very old scotch. Whiskey! Well, I will try it. I'll get it! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I was saving you for... Can't tell if we're getting anywhere. And I haven't seen Scotty in hours. <laughs> My man Haynar is getting more irritable by the minute. I'm giving him shots of formazine. It should have him climbing the walls. I would like to speak with you, Captain. I was wondering, would you please apologize to me again? <laughs> First, I do not like the way responsibility and duty has been portioned out to it. Further, I do not care much for the way you run this ship. Haynar, confine yourself to your quarters. This is... This episode is all over the place. It's crazy. But how's the research going? I need some more experiments. <laughs> For science. For science, yes. Have you seen Captain Kirk? I left him in the recreation room. With? Kalinda was with him. She seemed anxious to speak to him. This is definitely entertaining. A bit silly, especially this part here. But I feel rather strange. So now you're starting to feel strange? Oh, what the hell? Put him right under the table. <laughs> Literally. Now don't forget your, your task here. Good job, Scotty. I've <laughs> never noticed that bagpipe there. Oh no, it's nap time. Oh boy, this is not going too well. You did this to her, corrupted her, turned her away if from If you her. can't keep her, that's not my problem. Ooh, let's fight. I've been waiting to, for these Kevins to get slapped. Ooh, let's go. They seem pretty strong, like they're stronger than the average human. They're in human-like bodies, but I feel like... Okay, well now Kirk's winning. You're jealous. 
and try to kill me with your bare hands. You're reacting with the emotions of a human. You are a human. I'm stimulating him. I'm stimulating him. <laughs> what? <laughs> to use our form and now you're stuck with it you and your descendants for the next 300 years oh yeah that's that's not gonna work out for you when this ship gets to Kelva, the people on it will be human they'll be aliens we can bring this problem to the federation there are many planets in this galaxy that can be inhabited you would really do that that's what we would... would extend welcome to invaders that's what he no. was saying from the start but we would welcome friends yeah Yep, he's the one who set them up as enemies. That was never our decision. Perhaps it could be done. As long as you stay away from my woman. <laughs> if we retain this forum, where could we find a place? Seems to me that little planet you were on is kind of nice. It was beautiful. And you would get used to the open space in that body. You would wish to remain with him? He's most interesting, but I wish to go with you. I believe I owe you an apology. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Bridge, this is Rojan. I'm returning command of the ship to Captain Kirk. You will follow his orders. And can you please turn our communications officer back from a cube? We're going home. And check off too. Oh, they're not gonna show. Ah, wow, that episode flew by. Okay, first of all, research time. So. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet is a popular adage from William Shakespeare's play Romeo and Juliet, which of course I've read in school, but I don't remember this specific line from it, in which Juliet seems to argue that it does not matter that Romeo is from her family's rival house of Montague. The reference is used to state that the names of things do not affect what they really are. So... She had the flower, and she said that they had something similar on her, I guess, home planet. And they call it by another name. I mean, it's not really a flower. She said it was like a crystal that kind of grows, which sounds very beautiful. And then Kurt quotes this phrase. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So... There's beauty in the flower, there's beauty in her crystal, and even though they're called something different, essentially, they're kind of the same thing. So how do we take that and apply it to the episode as a whole? Is it like the humans and the Kevins, Kelvins, are at their core kind of the same? I'm not really sure. I mean, definitely when they're in the human bodies, even though humans, Kelvins, in human bodies, there's a lot less differences between them when they take over, uh, take the human form. And especially over time, they would become essentially kind of, you know, very, very similar, almost the same. This episode really did seem quite a bit on the silly side, uh, but I liked it. I'm kind of surprised by how much I enjoyed that. I think I've just kind of gotten to the point where no matter what they throw at me, I'm gonna have a good time. You know, we have our characters that we love and whether they're in a life and death situation or Scotty's having a fun drink with Kevin over there, his new best buddy. And however they come up with a way for Kirk to kiss somebody. <laughs> it's going to be a good time. And some of them are really going to make me stop and question the universe and my life. And you really put me down like a philosophical kind of deep thinking path. And some of them are just going to be just good, plain old good, silly fun. And this one's definitely leaning more on that side. But... It was interesting. The first half of the episode and the second half of the episode had really quite different contrasting moods. Like the first part was 
really scary, dire, very dark. And then when Kirk was like, oh, let's try to confuse them with their senses and emotions, I was like, this is taking a complete turn. And it did. <laughs> it's just so frustrating that those darn Kevins wouldn't take Kirk up on his offer to help them to peacefully move in and find a place to settle. Like, he was just so bent on, no, we're conquerors, we're going to rule you, we're going to conquer you. He viewed humans as inferior. And then when he was able to kind of literally walk in a human shoes and empathize with them and understand them and take on some of their qualities so that he could learn things like being grateful for the kind offer of the Federation going out of their way to help them. And definitely Kirk's point about how the Kelvins would be 300 years later, they'd be completely different from how they originally were when they set out. And they would be more like humans than their fellow Kevins back on Andromeda and would be the strangers, would be probably viewed as inferior, as rejects. Something that I wasn't thinking of, very clever. And a moment of silence for that poor girl at the start who got turned into a cube and crushed into dust. That's why I switched to the blue uniform, guys. That's why. Don't be going out there with a red uniform, even if you're a cute girl. You're not immune. All right. Thank you guys for joining me again. I had lots of fun. It's always a good time sharing this with you guys. And I will see you guys in the comments. Of course, let me know how you like this episode and how you're enjoying the reactions and how excited are you to finish up season two and move on to season three and all that good stuff. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.